welcome back to parts talk today i'm reacting to another video from tiktok for my podcast listeners you can watch this full episode on my youtube channel but before we begin please check out my ebook the parts manager guide proven strategies used to maximize sales and process improvement exclusively on amazon for now well i'll be setting up my own website so that you can get all my content in one place remember to hit that like button for more content and subscribe if you can find my topics informative so you will be notified when i drop a new episode it will only take you 1.5 seconds to do so a friendly reminder that i may be the only program that takes you beyond the sales department consistently of course others focus specifically on cars their performances look style features and diy videos from mechanics so Let's get into this video and hear what she has to say. On today's episode of Shit the Dealership Say, I had a client call in today that was told by the dealership that because he bought his car out of the lease, there was no way he could ever qualify for the lemon law. So the dealership told the customer. Remember, the dealership is a serious facility, service, sales, and spare parts. And some dealerships have over 150, up to 200 employees working for them. If it's one of those corporate dealerships, if it's a family owned small dealerships, well, it's little under 100 people, but that's still quite a lot for the entire dealership to call your customer. But let me hear what you have to say. In fact, it's not true. As long as the problems with your car are covered under warranty, usually the manufacturer's warranty, you can qualify for the lemon law. Doesn't matter if your car's leased, doesn't matter if your car's purchased, it really comes down to that warranty. So in that client's case, his car is still covered under warranty, so it doesn't matter whether it was leased or bought. Luckily, he called me, he let him know what his rights are and that the dealership was lying to him. So when in doubt, give me a shout, <laughs> Wes Gus Lemon. Lemon laws are in the United States and that they provide a remedy for purchases of cars and other consumer goods in order to compensate for products that repeatedly fail to meet standards of quality and performances. So basically what it says here on Wikipedia, right, is that although many types of products can be defective, the term lemon is mostly used to describe defective motor vehicles such as cars, trucks and motorcycles. In the United States, the lemon law protection arises under the state law which every uni U.S. state and the District of Columbia have in its own lemon law. I'm reading directly from Google here. And although the exact criteria vary by state, new vehicle lemon laws require that an auto manufacturer repurchase a vehicle that has a significant def defect and that the manufacturer is unable to repair within a reasonable amount of time. So basically she's a consumer rights lawyer and it is good that customers and a lot of individuals have that avenue when they are not sure as to what to do and when, when they want to take matters into their own hand but i mean if you go back to the video here let me bring it up and, uh, and let me go all the way down to the end i mean look at that smirk it's like she's saying gotcha remember in the end we are all dealing with people one bad apple spoils the whole bunch so if a greedy sales rep or finance manager tries to pad a sales invoice or uses quote unquote persuasive language or tactics then it's the entire dealership to blame uh, well is it the fault of the mechanics it's the fault of the parts people no it's it's the staff working in accounts or better yet it's those guys in de detailing or pre-delivery what about the service writers we can also blame those darn apprentices fresh out of high school who are just there to learn the trade and maybe move on to a master mechanic, master technician one day. Or it's the staff in BDC, she says the entire dealership. I've always recommended starting at the top. And I always try, well, you can go back to all my videos, I hold the leadership of the dealership responsible. If you discover a problem, then write directly to the, to the general manager or the managing director start a paper trail have your have all the documentation in place that you have been tackling this tackling this problem in today's society the paper trail starts with social media that's basically how i see it and uh, get this fun fact according to the wall street journal auto loans hit a record 734 billion dollars last year 55% of buyers financed 
their cars directly through their dealerships in 2021. So the highest and that is the highest percentage on record to date. Dealerships aren't going anywhere, so it begs to ask the question. If dealerships are so terrible, why don't the statistics show it? When you go on social media, particularly YouTube, all you see are people coming out bashing dealerships. And you have a lot of people, including myself, that have made a life, an honest living, working at a dealership. But anyway, let's move on to something more positive. Behind me is a 2010 BMW Z4 with an N54. What this is another TikTok video from Elite Motorworks and listen to his message while trying to explain exactly the car he's working on. What's the problem? You guessed it, oil leak. It's really common for the valve cover gaskets to leak on these engines. It's also common for the valve cover to leak. In this case, it is the valve cover. If you look really closely, you'll be able to see the crack right there. Here's another look at it from the inside of the valve cover. As soon as I get focused in, there it is. That crack is whack. And this is why we recommend to replace the entire valve cover, not just the gasket. You spend a little bit of money now and it'll save you a lot more money down the road. And this is one of the reasons why I love BMW. They keep me busy. He shows you the problem and he fixes the problem. Most of all, he looks at the glass half full. Some mechanics will tell you flat out that they don't work on certain cars. There are videos out there that will tell you they stay out and they will tell their past their customers stay away from certain models and certain manu certain manufacturers. And some will tell you that they don't work on these cars any at all. The cars with problems are guaranteed cash flow. So why not? And this is why I have a lot of respect for this mechanic. So it's always great to have mechanics as friends. And let me leave you with this note. You can go and hang with them while they work. They appreciate the company while turning that wrench. It helps them to concentrate and allows time to go by even faster. Besides, at least 98%, well, between 95 and 98% of mechanics actually pass through a dealership acquiring their certification and their experiences as they go on. So the dealership is not such a bad place after all. It's the people that make up our society the many different personalities that are around there that we have to work with from time to time i mean if you have family members you can tell everyone in the family has a different personality trait imagine working with them eight hours per day five days a week and you see those other people more than you see your own family at home the link to this channel will be in the description box below so what do you think you can drop your comments below remember to grab a copy of my book the parts manager guide on amazon smash that like button on your way out until next time